James Hicklin. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is James Hicklin. I am the assistant cage manager at the Commerce Casino. But that is really not that relevant this morning. What is relevant is all of the people that you see standing behind me and all of the people who could not be here today because they had to work. Because where we work, you have to show up. You don't make a great deal of money. You work hard for what you make. We are honest, hardworking people. This is what we do on a daily basis. I understand you all are lawmakers. You are responsible for reporting to the rule of law. I am asking you not to forget about the law of humanity. This is not about dollars and cents for many of us. This is about life and death. I love my job. I have been at the Commerce Casino for 30 years. I respect my work. I respect my coworkers. I respect what we get up and do every day. This is not just about providing an environment for people to come and win or lose their money. This is about community, family. This is about trust. And we trust you to do the right thing. We can't make it without you. I have been at the Commerce for 30 years. It's the only job I've had in California. I wouldn't know what to go out and do, and I feel that many of my coworkers would feel much the same way. Now, we have a chance to undo the good that has been done, and I'm just asking you not to take that chance. My parents always taught me that your energy is either moving in a positive direction or a negative direction. You all have a great deal of influence over our lives today, and we need for you to do the right thing on our behalf. Now, if the situation were reversed, and you came to me as a human being, and you expressed the importance of what I did to contribute to your life, I would be there for you. Please, do no less for us. Thank you. Thank you. Orlia Robello. Robello. Good morning, my name is Oralia Rebollo, and this is my son, Daniel. Um, I've lived in the city of Commerce since the age of two, so basically all of my life. Um, being in the city of Commerce has been one of the biggest blessings of my life, one of the biggest life-changing um, moments of my life. I grew up in a garage with my sister and my mom, but as a child, I never thought that I was poor. I mean, I remember even washing the dishes in our bathtub because it wasn't a converted garage, it was a garage with a bathroom. But, um, but I never thought that I was poor as a child. I thought I was the richest child, and um, I'm gonna tell you why. I attended preschool at our local park from the ages of three to four years old, um, and I had so many adventures that shaped my self-esteem, my brain development, my gross motor skills, my social skills. Then as a school-age child, I played sports at our local park. I played sports, did the after-school program, attended the summer day camp program every summer. And I had incredible opportunities of growth and leadership there. But most importantly, I was exposed to sporting events, to amusement parks, to beaches, to museums, all things that my mother was able to afford for us because they were at a low cost at the City of Commerce. Every summer, we went up to Lake Arrowhead, where the city has a camp that is at a very affordable and low cost to its residents. Imagine that, a city girl being afforded the, uh, the opportunity to live the mountain life, the opportunity that we give to so many children of our community who have never even seen a mountain, who have never even seen snow. Spending time at our local library afforded me the opportunity to volunteer and help kids with their homework, which later led to being employed by the City of Commerce for 18 years. I became a struggling adult 
And I never thought that college was gonna be an opportunity for me until I learned about the Commerce Casino Scholarship Program. Because of them, I stand here as the first, the only gra the first graduate in my family with the bachelor's degree in early childhood education from the, from the University of Laverne. The first in my family. I now have a six-year-old boy who now gets to enjoy from the same amenities that I did. And in my household, there are three generations living, and just like in my household, there is a legacy that the families of the City of Commerce have in the City of Commerce with their seniors, their children, and their young adults. I urge you to please be on the side of people who want to continue to provide these tools for our community. Thank you so None much. None of this would have been available to me if not for the revenue of the casino to the City of Commerce. So I urge you to please Thank you be on the side to provide and continue to provide these tools and not take them away from families. Thank you. Thank you. Ernie Crespo. Okay, C-R-E-S-P-O. No, anyone? You? <laughs> okay. My apologies, I got rejected the first time, so. <laughs> so this morning, good morning, I wanna just tell you how your decision is gonna affect my job. As the city's chief administrative officer, I'm gonna have to tell four out of every 10 people there that they no longer have a job. I'm gonna to have to tell the majority of the seniors and the youth that are in school right now that I'm gonna to have to close the doors to city facilities and all of our quality of life programs. I think unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, Hawaiian Gardens is the poster child of what casino revenues and the partnership with the casinos does to a community, as most of our revenues, a large percentage, over 75%, come from this revenue. So I urge you to please consider that, the impact of your decisions when you make a final. Thank you. Thank you. Aldolfo Marquez. Good morning, my name is Adolfo Marquez. I'm the Assistant Director of the City of Commerce, um, the Department of Parks and Recreation and lifelong resident of Commerce as well. Um, lives make, uh, parks make life better and so does the Commerce Casino. I know this because I have, I have observed it personally. Um, in 1983, when the Commerce Casino opened its doors in the City of Commerce, it has never closed those doors to its residents, to our program, um, because I've experienced it myself. In 1996, one of Commerce's own uh, young men, Jesse Perez, was one of 16 worldwide students accepted to the prestigious uh, Juilliard School in New York City. And as we celebrated that big accomplishment, we also had to quickly figure out how we were going to uh, help with the uh, tuition. And I say we because in the City of Commerce, we make it our business to help each other out. Um, and so as, uh, as much as bake sales uh, and uh, tamale fundraisers helped, uh, I, know, I knew where to go and it was uh, straight to the Commerce Casino. And uh, Mr. Haig, may he rest in peace, he uh, did not hesitate to help us fundraise over $8,000 for that individual. And that is besides all the other programs that they already offer. In 2013, they once again never closed the doors and uh, welcomed the Miss Commerce pageant there along with our Young Man of the Year, which they yearly give to the scholarship program there. Um, and we hosted a beautiful event there. The, that program helps to encourage and promote uh, our young people of commerce. And so I ask you to please help us uh, help the city uh, because parks make life better, the casino makes life better, and I hope that you here today will help us make life better. Thank you.
Rebecca Miranda. Anne Berotorin. I'm so sorry. Good morning. I'm going to give you a little bit different perspective. My name's Ann Barotran, and I'm the Supervisor of Aging Services for the City of Commerce. So I'm coming from the frontline perspective. Um, I've worked for the city for 25 years, and I wasn't from Commerce, and I wasn't from that area. But I quickly came to learn that Commerce is a very small city with large city opportunities, and that is because of the Commerce Casino. The Commerce Casino affects my programs by subsidizing or outright paying for programs for the senior citizens of Commerce. Many of our residents are Commerce Casino retirees. These are their golden years. They come to our building for education, exercise, cultural arts, and excursions. We offer food banks. We offer congregate meal programs. The Commerce Casino donates gift cards to local grocery stores at the holidays so they can buy meals for their families. We have annual volunteer recognition events. We have birthday parties for everybody that's 90 years and over, 100% paid for by the casino. We have community breakfasts with our mayor, helping bridge the gap between the politics and the residents and helping make everybody get along and see where each other's coming from. We're a small community that likes to live large, and we're given that opportunity because of the casino. Not only do they do these programs for my seniors, they do a holiday cheer program for all of the children and low-income programs in our city. And they take bus loads, and I mean bus loads, five buses, full of families up to the Commerce Casino where they feed them, they have Santa Claus, and they give them a Merry Christmas. Um, they've also sponsored my senior softball team. They do the scholarship programs, which you've heard about. So on behalf of a layperson who works for the city and wants to maintain my job with the city, my staff's jobs, and continue to serve our seniors, I urge you to please reconsider what you're looking to do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ernie Vargas. And that's V A R G A S. I guess I'm the third Ernie here today, right? Okay. Well, good morning. Uh, I want to sh share on a different, um, just take a different approach also. Um, I'm a resident of the city of Wine Gardens for the past uh, 53 years. I was hired by the city in 1986, and I've been doing gang prevention intervention programs for the city for the past 33 years. But I actually started years ago before that when I was just 20, 22 years old. Now I, I'm around 67. Um, and I think your proposal or your plan would, would definitely uh, affect our city. I have been doing intervention programs at, for at-risk kids for 33 years, and our city has changed almost 100%, not only through the intervention programs that we do in the school, but our, also our after-school programs. But I'd like to share one success story for you, um, and it's because the money that's provided through the casino has provided the additional programs that I have been able to do through the city. We started a rugby program in 19, um, 2008. And there's a young man right now going to graduate this year in June. He received a full scholarship to play rugby at uh, Lindenwood University. And this past two years, and he was selected as a collegiate All-American. And he also um, received the full scholarship uh, to that college because the opportunity was given to him. He was a young man who was in my classroom uh, when I taught the, the kids reasons why they shouldn't join a gang. He stayed in our after school programs and from the seventh grade to 12th grade, he continued in the program. And the opportunity was given to him because they, uh, other coaches saw him 
as a great young man and athlete. And be because of that, he's now going to graduate with a degree and come back to our city. But I think about if we lose our programs, how many other kids will not get the opportunity that he, that he has? And the, the other thing that would affect our city is that um, without the programs, it could possibly create uh, more gang membership and more activity. So I urge you to make the right choice and help all our cities that are asking you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Biden. Javier Hernandez. Muy buenos días. Si me permiten hablar en español, dar mi humilde opinión. Mi nombre es Javier Hernández. He vivido en, en la ciudad de Commerce por 16 años. Soy comisionado de tráfico de la ciudad de Commerce. Soy voluntario de un programa que tenemos que se llama ChemCat. Ah, vengo a suplicarles, señores, a todos nuestros gobernantes, senadores, ah, que no, no, nos, no les quiten las oportunidades a nuestra niñez de ir a, a buenas escuelas, no les quiten la oportunidad a nuestra juventud de ir a, a buenos colegios, buenas universidades, no le quiten la oportunidad a nuestros seniors que estamos recibiendo buenos beneficios de parte del casino. Nos, uh, nos dan muy buenos viajes, nos dan, nos dan comidas en eventos. Así es que Señores, a nuestro futuro gobernador, que ponga manos en este asunto, que no nos abandonen, que no abandonen nuestra niñez, nuestra juventud, nuestros seniors. Como dijo ahorita un hombre, están, están en riesgo las propiedades, los carros, las rentas de muchas familias, no, 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 no más de una o dos familias es de muchas familias. Así que tomen en consideración esta súplica. Yo les vengo a suplicar, les vengo a suplicar no les vengo, para que tomen conciencia de este efecto que nos van a, que está por, por venir. Muchas gracias. Les agradezco que hagan su atención contra mí y vamos adelante todo nuestro estado de California y oraciones para las familias que están perdiendo sus casas por los fuegos de California. Muchas gracias. Andy de Avila. Good morning, my name is Andy. Um, I come here as a resident of the city of Hawaiian Gardens. I've lived in the city uh, my whole life, all 25 years. Um, I've, I grew up playing, playing sports for the rec, for recreation, uh, as little as, you know, um, we start off with, I mean, they start off with kids as little as three years old. I have a three-year-old daughter and she, she just started her first season of soccer and t-ball this year. And you know, it was a joy as a parent just to see her uh, playing the same sports that I played as a child. Um, and you know, that's what our city is about. We nurture, they nurture our kids and um, our community from the age of, like I said, my daughter's three and she started in the, in the, in the recreation sports. They also have um, ballet, they have art, 
Uh, they have karate, you know, for whoever doesn't like sports, you know, sports is not for everybody. But we have very, they have various programs for all ages. After that, once they get to, um, to like second, third grade, uh, they, 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 um, we have sports all year round uh, that they can play, you know, keep them out of trouble. I, uh, uh, me, myself, it kept me out of trouble, kept me busy, you know, v uh, the various programs that I, that I was involved in with the city as a kid. And, you know, and we have the teen center as well. Uh, a lot of teens, you know, if, if they wouldn't have that, they would be out maybe, you know, messing around, causing trouble or hanging around with the wrong people. And um, part of that um, was why, you know, be, be like they mentioned before, our city was very um, involved with gangs back in the day. And um, I'm proud to say that now it's not, that's not the case. It's, we've, we've grew a lot from there. Um, also, I mean, um, all these, so basically my point is, um, these regulations would greatly impact, um, again, our, our city revenue, like it comes, 76% of our, of our city funds come from the casino. That's, uh, you're talking about, about $6.7 million that would be cut potentially. Um, and that would be very detrimental to, to our city and to our community. And it would not allow the city to provide all the, you know, all the various events and programs that, that they, that we have for the community as a whole. Um, and I just urge you to please reconsider the regulations. Thank you. Jose Luis Riviera. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jose Luis Rivera, and I'm representing Keep speaking my, to the mic closely. Okay, good morning. My name is Jose Luis Rivera, and I'm representing my house, Commerce Casino. Um, I started as a housekeeping 30 months later. I'm still here, working hard because it's such a nice company. Um, they've been helping me as an employee support my family, and I seen they've been support thousands of families. Um, if you guys change the rules, the revenue of the Commerce Casino is going to change me and thousands of employees they've been working at Commerce Casino. I encourage you to take us in consideration and not make any changes to support us and continue our legacy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Edward Madrano. Edward Madrano, City of Gardena. Okay. Tasha Serda. Thank you. Mark Henderson. I don't think so. Yes. All right. Mary Chen. Good morning, it's Nari Chin. Hi, my name is Nari Chin. I've been working for the Garden Casino for 20 years. And I'm a single mom. And I wanna tell you a story. When I break up, I have nothing. Basically, I have nothing. But one thing I have is my job. And I have four kids. It's not easy. I have no car. But I, one thing I keep telling my kid that we're gonna be okay. Mom, you're gonna make it because I have a job, a job that pay good. And if you decide to change how the game I play in the courtroom, it will affect my family, my co-worker families. And I always tell my kid that we have a goal. Mom, you're gonna make it. And from have no car, I have four car now for my kid. <laughs> you know, and. Every day I'm looking forward to go to work, not just get up there. No, I don't want to go to work. No, I want to go to work because it's a, a challenge. Work in a courtroom is like entertainment. You go meet new people, you make people happy, 
and it could pay. And about, I'm over 50 already. I don't think I can get another job somewhere else because I've been working there for so long. And I love my workplace. The courtroom club is the best job that I ever have. And please, please do not change in how the game I play in the courtroom. Because right now, a lot of us need that job, especially the people, a person like me, don't have high education, so I need that job. If any change happen, you know, I don't want to get up, have to be stressed out. Okay, do I still have a job? You know, go to work, do I still have my job? Or am I gonna, what happened to me? What happened to all the goal that I set for my kid? What happened to the, the goal that I almost reached already? And all of a sudden, everything gonna be changed? Just over a nice? Please consider your decision. Thank you. Thank you. Mako, Canada. Good morning. I stand here today a former citizen of Hawaiian Gardens and a casino employee, but I also stand here to remind you of why this all came to be. In the mid-90s, Hawaiian Gardens was nearly bankrupt and on the verge of becoming unincorporated. If that wasn't enough, they were struggling with gang, drug, and crime problems. The city needed help. My father, Robert Canada, former mayor, made his top priority to save the city and build community. The Hawaiian Gardens Casino helped make that dream a reality. Dr. Irving Moskowitz helped provide an immense amount of support to the community through his never-ending service. This wasn't an, your average business in the city. It was part of the community. I myself have been an employee for nearly 20 years and has given me and many others the opportunity to support their families. Making adjustments to the state casino regulations like this would impact my family and could send us into a complete whirlwind. The thousands of employees statewide would be impacted. Our lives would be devastated and many displaced the city would lose vital revenue that support youth and after-school programs, senior programs, recreational programs, and many community events. A loss of these programs would only hurt the community. The state's decision has the ability to significantly impact the lives of thousands of people across the state. The city, cities across the state, communities, employees, and families of many will be impacted. Hawaiian Gardens, the most. The city, the youth, and the community, and the casino employees need you to understand how detrimental this could end for many. My livelihood and the livelihood of many are in your hands. The city motto is our youth, our future. Please. Allow this community to have a future. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Vanessa Delgado. Good morning. Um, I represent the uh, Senate District 32, which includes the cities of Commerce and Hawaiian Gardens. And so I am here today um, to highlight the importance of this issue. You've heard so much testimony this morning. I'm not gonna repeat that, except to tell you that as a public servant, it is our responsibility to analyze the policy impacts and the unintended consequences of the decisions we make. This issue will have a tremendous unintended consequence for people throughout my district. I represent a million people, and I can tell you that if this change moves forward, it will devastate families throughout Senate District 32. And it is our responsibility as public officials to question why 
We are making the decisions before us. And I implore you to consider that. Now, I have 300 letters here of people who could not attend today. And I will submit those into the record of additional people who are protesting these proposed changes. And I have one request of you today, other than to consider that this policy change will have tremendous unintended consequences to the negative, uh, to the detriment of this area, but that you extend this hearing to allow everybody who has come to speak. These are working people who have taken the time to come here. You have 125 speakers signed up. I ask today that you hear their comments. I would do it if I had a hearing, and I implore you to do that as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Margaret Mercado. I'm terribly sorry, I didn't see the O. Good morning. My name is Margarito Mercado, and I'm a resident and also employee of the Hawaiian Gardens Casino. Uh, it's, it's very hard for me to come and talk to you. I'm not used to talking to another person in front of me, especially people behind me. But um, I hire a lot of um, employees, and it will be very hard for me to tell them that they're about to lose their jobs. So please, making those changes is gonna hurt my family and hundreds in this room. Thank you. Thank you. Blanca Zendejas. Good morning. My name is Blanca Sendejas, and I have lived in the city of Commerce for over 50 years. And I, I'm here to let you know that I have seen my city grow thanks to the Commerce Casino. We have grown in a good way with not only our, having a pre, free preschool, a lot of programs for young people that keeps them away from breaking into our homes and breaking into our cars, because as long as they have these programs and at least part-time jobs, they keep busy. We have programs to keep our seniors busy, and if it wasn't for the Commerce Casino, we wouldn't have all of this. Because of our athletic programs that we have, we have been able to send several times our students or athletes to compete at the Olympic Games, okay? And they have come back with medals. We're very proud of that. If it wasn't for the Commerce Casino, we wouldn't have been able to do that. Also, the scholarships, something that is so important for the young people of our generation. I wish the Commerce Casino would have been around when I, when I had to go to college. I didn't have enough money to buy a $10 book, and I had to go to the library all day on Saturday. But because of the Commerce Casino, hundreds of our young people that have graduated from high school have gone on to college to get an education. When those young people graduate in their field, they're gonna be an asset to humanity. A lot of them are probably gonna do wonderful things, okay? And I would like you to please relay to the people that have to make a decision on this issue that to many of these cities that are here now, especially to City of Commerce, the Commerce Casino is our backbone. Because of them, we walk up straight and forward into the future. Please, please, don't put us on a wheelchair. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Pat Jones. Good morning.
morning. I'm not a big time speaker, nor, uh, nor am I a big time executive, but I am going to represent the Bicycle Hotel and Casino. I have been employed there for 32 and a half years. They, it is a great place to work. I have seen the change that the casino have done to the city of Bell Gardens. I'm not a resident of Bell Gardens, but I'm there most of the time. <laughs> we do have a great casino. We do do great things for the city. I don't know nothing about the revenue. Like I say, I'm not that big. I'm just a peon. But I do have a job there. And I do want to keep my job there. We do big, tremendous things. We do big Christmas parties for the city of Bell Gardens, for the schools for the less fortunate. We do give scholarships that I know. We do great things. Please consider what you guys want to do. Consider you sitting out here and us sitting up there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem, City of Commerce, John Soria. Good morning, my name is John Sori. I'm the mayor pro tem for the City of Commerce. Not only am I a local elected official, but I am a homegrown resident of the City of Commerce. As you sit here looking into the crowd this morning, you see signs that say our youth and our future. Back in the 80s when the, the casino came to the City of Commerce, I was that youth and I was that future. This morning, you've heard from countless individuals that are not only employees of the, city, of the Commerce Casino, of the City of Commerce, or they're both, uh, employees of our city, of our casino, and residents of our community. The things that you're looking, that you're considering this morning will have grave impacts upon our community, but not just our community or the communities that have card, card clubs within their, within their communities, but you're gonna have some devastating effects throughout the southeast area, throughout Southern California. As you've heard this morning, you are gonna impact individuals financially, you're gonna impact cities financially, but those impacts are also gonna be social. They're also gonna be impacts to the quality of life that we all have come to appreciate and we've come to, to work hard for. Not only am I a, a local elected official for the City of Commerce, but I'm also a 20 year veteran of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. I can tell you firsthand that this decision will have grave effects to our public safety. Not only to our public safety, but you're gonna see the City of Commerce face some major crises as you impact our library programs, our parks and rec programs. You know, you heard from our assistant uh, parks and rec director earlier today, Adolfo Marquez. Adolfo Marquez was my summer day camp director when I was a young man in the 80s. So that goes to show you the generations and generations that are here represented this morning here in this room. We, we strongly ask you to consider this decision that you are gonna make. The, you know, the City of Commerce, the Commerce Casino, as you've seen on the back of these shirts of these hardworking people, men and women, it says 35 years. That's 35 years of them being our neighbors, of being our partners, and ensuring that there's a quality of life not only for them, but also for our community. So we ask you, if you look at our public safety, our public safety alone in the City of Commerce is 19 million. If this is successful, and we hope that it's not, that's gonna be a $16 million impact and we're gonna to have to find ways to ensure that we can continue to move forward with our programs and our services. So this morning we ask you to strongly consider the decision you're about to make. As you were, as you were beseeched earlier, place yourself in our shoes because today you're looking at us, but tomorrow someone may be looking at you when your community is faced with these same challenges. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm so sorry, I can't pronounce the last name because I can't read it. Hilda. Yeah. <laughs> How do you spell your last name, Hilda? Uh, G U I W -L, L E N. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Hilda. I wasn't planning on speaking at all because I cannot do public speaking at all. Um, I 
I was having a hard time even talking to some of my employees at work. But because of the casino, uh, what the casino has done for me and my family, I wanted to be here and support the casino. And I'm here from the Bow Gardens Bicycle Club Casino representing them. Um, not only am I going to be affected, but thousands of employees at the casino are going to be affected by the decision. Uh, please, I consider, I please, I beg you to reconsider um, your decision because um, I know what the casino has done for me. It, four years ago, I did not have a job. I was practically homeless. And because of the casino and the chance that they gave me, um, I'm now employed and I'm stabilized. Not only do I have a home, I have a job, I have full benefits. I did not have full benefits. I couldn't see a doctor for years. Uh, because of the casino, I have full benefits. I'm able to see a doctor. Um, not only do I, I also have mental, mental health, um, mental health, and because of the casino, because of the services that the casino, the casino has provided, I'm able, I was able to uh, have those services. And like I said, I've been stabilized. I'm with my family, um, and the casino is has done great things for me. Um, just like one of my employees had mentioned, one of the employees there had mentioned that the casino has done, Chris, they do Christmas parties for us, they do event for us, they provide lunch for us on a daily basis. Um, they also provide uh, uh, employee appreciation. They provide bonuses for us, so they do great things. They also provide scholarships. So please reconsider your decision. Thank you. Thank you. Miguel R. with Acme Player Services. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Miguel Rios, M-I-G-U-E-L-R-I-O-S, last name. Um, I uh, just learned about this a week ago. I know it's been ongoing for years. Um, I did a little bit of research myself. It took like an hour. Um, I just want to know more about this and how this will affect me because I work for a third party uh, proposition player. And uh, <laughs> well, I graduated from Cal State Long Beach in 2012 with a degree in economics and uh, read up on this and I understand that the tribes have been affected by, uh, by something called a little letter that was that was allowing card rooms to operate in unintended ways. More fundamentally, I don't understand how the state of California allowed an artificial monopoly on table gaming. I see that uh, this monopoly through government regulation, they're trying to assert their authority. And the problem I see now is that the little letter was written by the Gambling Control Commission. I know there's some pending litigation about that back in 2007. And it sparked an industry. An industry generated many jobs, benefited card rooms, many communities uh, that they are located in and around the cities. I don't personally live in um, the Gardens Casino, or around the Gardens Casino, Hawaiian Gardens. I live in Long Beach, so I've been benefited by this. Um, since that letter was struck down by this commission in 2016, we are here today to try and create a fair solution for all parties involved. I thank the commission for their time and their consideration today. Thank you. Joe Cabrera Zermeno. Uh, good morning, board. My name is Joe Cabrera Zermeno. C A B R E R A Z E R M E N Y O. I was uh, just alerted to this a few days ago, so please. Uh, uh, my, my verbiage and my three minutes are going to be extemporaneous, kind of, sort of. First, I'd like everyone to look around in here. The majority of the people in this room are people of color right now. 90 to 95 percent here are, will be affected by this decision that the Board Bureau of Gaming Control will do. To help solidify 
This in the Department of Justice Division of Law Enforcement Bureau of Gaming Control's members' mind. The fact really is this issue requires the input of all Californians, voters, and would respectfully ask that this be considered to be placed on our ballot, California, so we can all decide how this issue should be and not just a few. I would ask, the question of quality of life is so broad and extensive, it is simply immeasurable in this extremely limited time period on how to calculate not only the financial impact to our community of nearly 20,000 residents in the city of Hawaiian Gardens brought to the forefront by the tribal casinos. The greed for money by the tribal casinos on the topic of rotation of the player dealer position is plain, simple, clear, greed. They want to crush the remaining competition that affects their bottom line, their own wallets. Greed. 30 seconds, sir. If this is changed, it will affect profoundly negative the future of our women, men, children, and babies of the City of Hawaiian Gardens and of every other community here. Thank you very much. Sandra Ronis, City of Hawaiian Gardens. And I'm terribly sorry, I can't remember. What is this? Jane? I think so. <laughs> I, I come to the Bicycle Casino. I'm a dealer. And my name is Jane Trank. And uh, today I come here, I only talk the three things. First thing I want to say, I know my company is not very rich, but they try their best. Try their best for the customer, try their best for employee, including the children. Try their best for the city, the school. And the second thing I want to say, my company, I'm sorry, sorry. and uh, my company tried the best, and uh, we, like a little small world, we come to everywhere, have all different color, all different age, all different language, but we do the relation, really love, and uh, I know how much employee depend on our company, including the customer. They depend on the two, because I say that I'm a dealer. I always say the dealer is the company, the face. They walk in, first of all, see us. And then some customer coming, if we desk break, we sit down, talk to each other, that's why today I'm coming. I'm not only for the with employee and including some customer. And if somebody they talk to me, they said, Oh, I'm Sunday, I come to I'm weekend, I come to play for your hand. I without I have a lot of fun. I take out my pressure because my business gave me a lot of pressure. I come to your company, I take out the pressure charge my battery, and I come back to do more business. There's somebody talk to me, it's this single father. They have a bar shop, and they finish that, come home, they self, nowhere can go. They said, I come to your company, I talk to your guests, you hear just like all family too. And they really 
like it, they depend on the two. That's why I only talk about this. And then I want to ask you so your guests your to try to help us save all the family, save our company. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Crystal King. Crystal King from the bike. Okay, we'll come back to Crystal. I think she's being called. Uh, Layla Leon from Commerce. Miss King, you, are you Miss King? Okay, you'll go next after uh, Miss Leon. Thanks. And there's a seat right up here. Good morning, my name is Lila Leon, and um, before I start, I want you to remember the word impact. Um, I've lived in the city of Commerce for over 65 years. My uh, parents decided to buy a home there when I was four years old, and so that was before the Commerce Casino. So I can speak firsthand of the impact that the Commerce Casino has had on my life, and in deciding to raise my son there, who in turn has decided to raise his two, grand, his two kids, my two grandchildren. So there is now four generations in the City of Commerce. The impact that the City of uh, Commerce Casino has had, or the Commerce Casino has had, you've heard from all the residents that have come before you, so I'm not going to you know, repeat that, but I want you to remember the word impact, because it's not just going to have an impact on the Commerce residents but also on the Commerce Casino, I keep saying, well, it's the Commerce Casino, their employees, the businesses around them, all the food services that will go, um, well, they, it will be impacted. And one of the things that I want you to, I, I, as I was sitting, I thought, if I was on that, on, in your seats, I would ask, why now? What is driving this now? Because these games have been in existence for, what I understand, 20 years. So why now? And what void is it going to fill? It's going to fill a negative void in the Commerce Casino employees, the residents, the businesses. So again, I ask you, why now? And I just want to leave you with um, a little story uh, of mine, I was seconds, actually, oh, I guess not, but so then I should, <laughs> I'll just leave you with the word impact. So when you do make your decision, please remember the negative impact that it will have on so thousands and thousands of people, but the positive impacts that the Commerce Casino has brought to not only to the city of Commerce, to the neighboring cities, this Montebello city of Downey. They're not a, just a corporate entity, but they're our friends. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. All right, Ms. King. Hi. Thank you again um, for letting us voice our concerns. I'm going to get a little emotional because I really feel strongly about this. I'm a mom. I'm a, I'm a wife, and I'm approaching my 25th year at the bike. I just, I don't understand it. I want you to understand that the bike has not only just helped me buy a house, it's helped me raise my two kids, it's helped me to prepare them for college, and this means the world to me that I've been able to do this as a mom. But not only just me, but our community. I see my team members, 2,000 of us, that of all doing the same thing, we would have a collective goal, not only to make the bike succeed, but also raise our families, support our, our, our community. Um, the thousands of kids we impact, uh, the Bicycle Casino doesn't just support uh, the employees, we have 
thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars that go into scholarship funds for not only our team members' kids, but the community's kids. So they strongly believe in having a um, brighter and successful future for our next generation. So I want you to think about the impact not just on our personal, but how we affect the community as well. Um, we impact uh, thousands of needy families every year. We provide them with a Christmas that they necessarily would not have. Um, I personally volunteer um, every year for this. I also help with the vo um, volunteer with the Boys and Girls Club because I believe that because the casino has set this great example, we all do the same thing to support it. Um, so I want you to take in consideration of that, not just the families and the employees, but the businesses around it. We su support uh, a whole bunch of vendors and we're gonna impact them too, not to mention all the um, first responders of Bell Gardens. So again, thank you for hearing our concerns. I hope you do take this into consideration of what this means to all of us on a personal level, not just on a financial level. Thank you. Richard Hernandez. Uh, it's probably afternoon now, so good afternoon. My name is Richard Hernandez. I live in the city of Commerce. Uh, the word impact has come up so many different times here. But the reality is, you're looking at individual lives here. It's not just watching a, a program on TV and say, oh, look at how these people live. The reality is that all these people that are in here are concerned. There are people that are working now that are unable to be here to share their concerns. But uh, uh, the casino provides unsurmount of services, and I'm referring to our youth. Uh, without those facilities, without uh, the community reaching out to them, my question is, where do you think they'd end up if they didn't have great mentors to guide them in their life, to help them think? to make the right decisions. These are just a part of the benefits that we get from the casino. So um, there, there's one thing that actually got to me when the gentleman was speaking about greed from the uh, Indian nations. That I don't believe. They are a surviving people. But in turn, we are all people and we should be looking out for one another. And I hope that you do make the right decision and think about the consequence and the benefits. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Lillian Magana, Magana, I'm so sorry. Lillian? Hello, uh, my name is Liliana Magaña, and I am currently a resident of the City of Commerce, along with a city employee for the Department of Parks and Recreation. And most importantly, I feel that I'm a product of the City of Commerce, and I'm a product of the benefits that the City of Commerce is able to provide to its residents uh, due to the Commerce Casino. Um, you know, I previously lived in a city where we didn't have this kind of revenue, and we didn't offer uh, these kind of programs. And I remember as a child wanting to do more, wanting to participate in sports, wanting to do something more with my life, and my parents not being able to afford that. Um, fortunately, we moved to the City of Commerce where the City of Commerce was able to provide me the opportunity to participate in boxing. 
And because I was able to participate in boxing, I got to be a national champion, and I got to be ranked number one in the nation, and I got to travel, and I learned so much. I'm not currently a boxer, but I do feel that because of this program, it helped shape my life. It helped shape who I am today as a young, strong woman. Um, and currently, I'm employed with the City of Commerce, and I'm giving back to my community. Um, I do work with teens and preteens, and there um, we're able to program, provide so much program that positively impacts their future. Um, and losing this kind of support would be devastating. It would be devastating to our future. It would be devastating to our programs. And I do uh, urge you to consider um, how much of a negative impact it would create for our future, for our children. Um, currently, they are able to participate in sports. They are able to travel. They are able to learn about music and art. And because of it, they're able to be uh, successful in life. In the City of Commerce, we are not just providing a service, but we are forming life champions. And I urge seconds. you to consider that. Thank you. Margarita Perez. Good morning. I am Margarita Perez. I live in Commerce for about 45 years. So my son, Jesse Perez, got a very good education. Thank you, Commerce Casino. Thank you, City of Commerce. Why? Because they help a lot. Jesse studied in Julia Art College in Camers Casino helped to him. Camers, Syria Camers helped to him too. So what happened? Right now, thank you to Camers Casino, thank you to Syria Camers. Jesse is still live in a, in a, for, uh, get a job for the director art in San Diego, California. Why? Because they learn in Julia Art and get a good education for Commerce Casino and Syria Commerce help to him. And I am had a lot motivation with a coach, with a everybody help to him. And right now have a good education is the reason is he work in a in, uh, for for uh, um, director in, uh, in in this place in the in director in a, in a, in the university the, the, the San Diego so he still have a very good job. Thank you, Camus Casino, and thank you, Syria Camus. So his name is Jesse Perez, and then have a good education. My three kids, my three boys have good education. Thank you for Camus Casino, and thank you for Syria Camus. So thank you very much for your time, okay? Thank you. Allison Peck. Hello, my name is Allison Peck. I'm a senior floor staff at Commerce Casino and I've been an employee there for 31 years. The, the people who are the customers in our area are local customers. They stop by because they like us. The people here, they stop by because it's close. 
They stop by on an afternoon after work. People are not going to drive an hour and a half to three hours each way to go to an Indian casino just to play these games. And in the absence of these games, will there be a void created that, that illegal games in the Los Angeles area will crop up and all the illegal activity that that also garners? The spirit of California is opportunity and prosperity for all Californians. Thank you. Tori Big Knife. Appreciate everyone being here and, and hearing the different perspectives. I represent the Viejas Band of Kumeyaay Indians. And I understand the issue here today that we're talking about to be the Bureau's enforcement and the rulemaking process involved with that. And you have a standard in the penal code today that talks about what systematic and continuous rotation of the player dealer position. So one of the areas where there is probably some agreement, but a difference of opinion, is an agreement that the, the law is on the books today, that systematic and continuous rotation has to be enforced. What I understand the Bureau to be doing is trying to go through a rulemaking process now. No rules have been drafted yet, but a rulemaking process is ahead to try to provide some clarification on what systematic and continuous means and how that should then be enforced going forward. So we've heard a lot of discussion here about lost jobs, lost revenues to communities. I don't understand that to be the discussion today, though I respect the amount of fear that this situation has created for folks in this room that have jobs, that care about their families and these important issues. We also represent tribal governments. And the only funding these tribal governments get is through Indian gaming. That's what the California voters decided back in 2000, and that's why the regulatory system and the legal framework was set up the way it is. These were tribes that were in abject poverty, that had absolutely nothing. You know, the statement about greed is just, you know, it's disparaging. That's not what this is about. This is about understanding what the legislature meant when they passed that law that said systematic and continuous rotation. Now, there was a comment made at the beginning in the description of this process about, well, it's not a defined term. And yes, there are lots of terms and statutes that are not defined terms. The question is, is there a plain and clear meaning for what that term, those terms mean, systematic and continuous? And most of us know continuous means without interruption. Now, there's a two-hand standard that was established by the card rooms if you go and you look at the rules, every rule, practically every rule, has a two-hand standard for the rotation of the player-dealer position. That was an industry standard that was formed by the card rooms. So we look forward to having a conversation as we continue to work through this process. Our positions, of course, have been submitted in writing. And, you know, God bless America that we can have a difference of opinion and respectful discussion about that. Thank you. Thank you. Judy Nguyen. Judy Nguyen. Hello, my name is Judy. I am a member of the Bicycle Hotel and Casino. Um, as you can see, this room is full of people who are here to support and protect our local job and city revenues. Bicycle Hotel and Casino have provided thousands of jobs for the residents of Bell Gardens as well as the residents of other cities. This job has been helping me put my little brother through college, taking care of my sick mother, 
and has been helping lots of family who's in this industry. We live in a time of opportunity, and since I have the opportunity to stand here before you, I ask that you please reconsider any changes that will, that will devastate our community. This is your opportunity to do the right thing for our community. Thank you. Thank you.